Hello and welcome to the WNBL show. We have had a glow up. We are back <laughs> after a pandemic, after a hub season, after an interrupted season last season. Mm-hmm. We are back. We are a vodcast. Yes, we are a vodcast. I'm How exciting. Megan Hustrate. You? I'm Annalie Maley. The reigning Susie Batkovic medalist of this league is the league MVP. I'll we- never get used to that, by the way. That's a bit strange, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Welcome, Annalie. Great to have you here. I'm You're excited to be here. Going to be a co-host on this wonderful show all season long. And of course, we had to have you episode one. So thanks for coming on for the season. I'm so excited. For people that know me, I love a yarn. <laughs> Do you? I love to chat. <laughs> I'm all right at it. Not bad. Most of the time I have no idea what I'm saying, but I mean, there's lots of things we can cover. Very exciting. Mainly about you because you've you've had one hell of a year and we're <laughs> going to talk all about it, but we will be here every week. There's lots of ways to consume us. We have the best of the best as co-hosts joining me here every week, um, stars from around the league, and we'll be going to the players every week. So all eight clubs covered uh, will be going to the players and the people in the know, the movers in the shakers that's mm-hmm. what we will be doing and it's so exciting because it is finally round one yes it is finally I feel like this preseason has been very long it's been a very long preseason not in a bad way but um I don't think we've had such an uninterrupted preseason for a couple of years so that's different I guess the different thing about this preseason is that, you know, the Opals had a home FIBA Women's World Cup. Ah, oh, yes, we did. In the we middle. Did. And <laughs> congratulations, Adelaide, because you were part of the rose gold bronze medal winning team. Mm-hmm. Talk me through the experience. Oh, uh, there's like actually not enough words because I think about like the basketball side of it first and, you know, the 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 type of people I was surrounded by, the the level of players and professionalism and skills and um, like fully packaged players that, you know, are performing at the peak of their career. And th- like being able to soak that up every day, that just was something that elevated my game. Um, and then I think about the experience as like a female athlete um, to have packed out stadiums like that to like I'd go get coffee in the morning and I'd see people wearing like little Melee jerseys which was the coolest thing ever like that will never not be cool and I think that it's not very often as a female athlete that I feel like a professional Mm -hmm. sports person and in that way I mean you know we're we're operating in a male dominated arena and I'm not often feeling like I'm a, a a recognized personality in the sports world. That was the first time in my career that I've ever felt um, I imagine how professional sportsmen feel on a day-to-day basis. So for me, like what that did for women's sports and hopefully off the back of that, what that can bring into the WNBL mm-hmm. season, it's very exciting. It very is, exciting. It is so exciting. We had... Um, the biggest ever attendance at a Women's World Cup, of course, Australia did it best, which was no surprise. Mm-hmm. I did see a lot of young boys and girls and adults yes. wearing the Maley singlet too, which was fantastic. But yeah, let's talk about the momentum because eight of the 12 Opals are playing in the Signet WNBL this season, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and we look at someone like Lauren Jackson, who has had... The most remarkable comeback story, she's going to be playing for the Flyers. Mm -hmm. You're back at Bendigo where you won a league MVP. And Mm -hmm. then you've got Christy Wallace, for example, who's um, crossed from rival to rival going from Southside to (laughs) Melbourne. So there's Opals um, fresh off the World Cup right around the league. Yes. And the one thing I do want to mention is like when we talk about the Opals, like obviously – it's it's easy to recognise the women that just played in the World Cup, but there is an extended squad of us. And, you know, I think that squad goes to like 30-something deep. And that, that World Cup prep started from the Asia Cup qualifiers last year. So there's uh, a lot of athletes and a lot of women that went into creating that experience for the privileged ones that got to have that. Um, so as amazing as it's going to be to see the Opals that played in the World Cup, being able to also play in the WNBL. There's so many Opals that built that opportunity for us that are also stepping in, into that area, which is equally as exciting. Um, the thing that I will flag is, I, I, you know, with the conversations that I've had with 
um, some of the girls on the World Cup team. Um, it was it was hard to go straight from um, World Cup to WNBL preseason. Um, some of us had some time off. Um, I personally got four days, um, <laughs> but there's it was it was mentally very challenging to go from such a high intensity environment to such another high intensity environment. So you know, I'm I'm hoping we all check in on each other as the time mm. goes on. But uh, yeah, I guess to wrap that up, it is exciting. But it's also a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It is a lot. And that extends to the coaching staff. Cheryl Chambers, mm-hmm. assistant coach of the Opals, head coach of the Flyers, was back at work on Monday. Yeah. It's actually a practice game between the Boomers and the Flyers the following Saturday night. And yeah. um, it was out at Keelaw and I went out and had a look and the crowd was huge, which yep. was amazing. But I, I said to Shez, you know, had a little bit of a giggle that literally a week ago you were winning a bronze medal yes. in Sydney and a week yes. later she's um you know coaching a, a practice game at Killer but this is how this is how it works and we um we want so many things to level up to mean that you're professional athletes it's yeah. just at the moment you're carrying the load in terms of yes. scheduling yes and we do love we do love all the experiences that we have i say we I, i'm definitely not talking for ev- for everyone. I do love all the experiences I get to have as a female basketball player. There's so many positives. There's so many positives. And I think I was privy to a lot of the positives at the World Cup. Um, And I'm really excited um, to bring that to the WNBL. And then also like for me, Bendigo is like my little community, my safe space, my, you know, it's a regional town, bringing that excitement around women's sports to Bendigo. Mm -hmm. That's exciting too. It is. (laughs) We are going to drill down on all things Bendigo, but let's uh, put a lens further on the Signet WNBL season, which tips off Wednesday night. It's Mm -hmm. a grand final rematch between Perth and Melbourne in Perth. The scene of that infamous, hectic, epic game two of the grand final series. Um, as we mentioned, lots of opals, which is fabulous. We've got so much great young talent coming through and they are weaved right around the eight mm-hmm. clubs. And then we've got amazing international talent. As yeah. we know, we continue to attract high caliber imports. We've had four coaching changes. So half the league have new coaches this year. Crazy. Kennedy <laughs> Kariyama at Bendigo is your new coach. Chris Lucas has gone from Adelaide to Melbourne where mm-hmm. he's taken um, the reins of the reigning champs. And then we've got two former champions in Nat Hurst and Kristen Veal, who had um, decorated WNBL careers, are beginning their coaching careers at Adelaide yeah. and Canberra. Yeah. So there's so many storylines. And I, I think we say every season, you know, it's the, the league's never been um, this tight and the standard's I better know, than ever. We but- do say it every year. <laughs> we actually do. But we really <laughs> do mean it this year too. It's it's it, it is so hard. I've been trying to look at sort of a top four, picking a top four. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to put no, eight to you four. Can't, you can't. You can't separate. It's hard to separate all the teams like that. And also, before we move on, big shout out to Nat and Vili. Like, we need more women coaches in the yes. league. We love our male coaches, but we also need more women coaches in the league. Yeah. Powerful, experienced, professional, strong women representing at the head of the team that is that's what we want that is what we want three out of eight it's still not good enough I don't think we've hit really beyond three I remember a few years ago doing um a feature with uh, Larissa Anderson Cheryl Chambers and Claudia Mm Brassard because they had a link where Cheryl was coaching Boleyn yeah and Chloe and Larissa were players and they all sort of went off on their own ways as coaches but great to see two former players transition into coaching and experienced in their own right in their coaching journeys just not yet as WNBL head coaches (laughs) but um the standard is going to be yeah. serious, isn't it? Yeah. I think as well, like the the professionalism of this league with our new sponsors and the new um, like layout of what this season looks like, it's just going to elevate us all a little bit. And I think that the, the standard of play, the standard of professionalism um, and all of that has just risen so much in the last couple of years and what I'm excited to see is a an uninterrupted season but the way each team is so deep in talent and how each team is going to have to adapt to the next team because it's such a variety of players coaching styles playing styles all that stuff super exciting but 
it's also so dynamic. And I, I think about the type of games that we have coming up this week, but I think about the type of game that the Boomers Lynx game is going to be mm. will be such a different game to the Caps Bendigo game, which will be such a different game to the Southside Adelaide game. And it's giving the viewers and the audience like all the best parts of basketball wrapped up into a neat little WNBL package. So <laughs> it's, it's really cool. <laughs> of course, our new broadcast still means that WNBL comes to Wednesday, so we love some midweek Wednesday hoops. You can find us on ESPN starting with the Perth Lynx and Melbourne Boomers this Wednesday night, and then you can stream the games on the weekend live and free on the Nine Now app. So make sure if you haven't downloaded that app, get onto that before the weekend. Yeah, we love our apps. We Easy to watch on the phone. And that's, you know, of course, where you're listening to us here on the WNBL exactly. show. Let's crack into a bit of a preview of round one, Adelaide, because it all tips off. As we said, Wednesday night, it's the Lynx and the Boomers, the scene of that infamous game two. Mm -hmm. I still think I'm catching my breath from that game. It was, and you know, I've been around the league 15 years. There's been people that's been, that have been around a lot longer than me, reckon it was one of the best finals we've ever seen. Um, bit of context, Perth took the win over Melbourne in Melbourne in game one, headed to Perth for game two. Melbourne had a sensational nail-biting win over the Lynx, which sent it to game three back in Melbourne where the Boomers took out the championship. And the first team to ever lose game one and rebound in the three game format series that, to win the championship. Really, I didn't know that. Coming in hot that. and early with the stats, Annalise. So we know that both teams have had a lot of personnel changes yep. over the off season. So let's start with the Lynx. They are the home team. So Darcy Garvin, your teammate from yep. the Opals, has gone to Europe. Unfortunately, we don't have Marina Mabry and Jackie Young back, two of the best imports we have ever seen in this yeah, league. Yeah, they were unreal. And uh, Alex Tupatoni's having a baby. So exciting for her. So exciting for her. That's so great. So they bring in some... Uh, Familiar faces. We talk about Amy Atwell, a WNBA mm -hmm. top draft pick this year. She started for the Spark. She's a yep. WA girl. Ryan Petrick's been trying to uh, net her signature for many years. Yep. Um, and we'll talk a bit about your WNBA experience a bit later, but that is a huge signing for Perth. Yeah. Oh, my God, absolutely. Especially because the way Ryan likes to run his teams, um, it's very fast-paced Everyone can shoot, everyone can dribble, everyone can attack. And she just fits right into that kind of piece of the puzzle um, that they lost in some of the players from last year. Um, so having her into the mix, being able to play an outside game, sucking people out of the key, leaving space for players like Sherfy and taking attention away from players like Chloe Bibby, Alex Sharp, Sammy Wickham, it's going to be such a dynamic starting five. <laughs> so they are dynamic and that's what we've come to know from Ryan Patrick's team. Sammy mm -hmm. coming off a, a terrific World Cup tournament with yourself. Um, Sherfy, what a wonderful basketball story she's been this year, of course, winning a Commonwealth Games three-on-three mm -hmm. medal, um, which was just wonderful. And then, yeah, you bring Chloe Bibby in, you mentioned Alex Sharp, they are going to be good. So are the Boomers, but they've had their disruption. So we yeah. know that Chris Lucas is the new coach taking over from Guy Malloy. Confirmation last week, Tess Madgen has had knee surgery and will miss the start to this season. Um, but they retain that that key core from the last few years. They bring back Tiffany Mitchell as an import. Mm -hmm. They've lost Ezzy Magvigor, but they've gained an opal in Christy Wallace. Yeah, they have. And teams like Melbourne, like they've lost some players, but they've also retained a lot of their core um, from previous years. There's a lot of returning players that have been there year after year after year. You know, your Rachel Brewsters, your Panina Davidsons. Um, and, of course, Kayla is, you know, the new mum is going to yes. be there, her and Pearly Girl. Um, so there's there's a lot of returning pieces. And I think that Chris, being having been in the league for such a long time, he's I don't think he's going to have any problems just kind of moving some of those pieces around to obviously um, accommodate for some of the missing players. Mm. Uh, you know, Christy Wallace is phenomenal. She's just phenomenal and what an amazing point guard person to have in the league running around and I want her on my team, not playing against her. No one her. wants to play against <laughs> I Wally. don't want to play against Wally. I want her on my team. So, I, you know, Melbourne, Melbourne do what Melbourne do and I think that 
Chris is an amazing coach. He'll be able to kind of rally the troops, get them together, and they've got so many talents uh, and they run very deep into the bench. Um, I, I really am sending all my love to Madge, speedy recovery. I'm, I'm sure she'll come back better than ever, as she always does. Um, but, yeah, that's that's my take on the boomers. So, Chris coached Kayla at Townsville with much success. Part of that group was Mia Murray, who is the only active player currently in the top 20 games played in the league, apart from someone else we're going to talk about uh, (laughs) shortly. But um, they've had great success as a trio at Townsville. And she's a hell of a signing in terms of her experience. Um, We've seen her come off the bench I don't think she'll be coming off the bench to start no, the season, given no. um, the injuries at the Boomers. But um, it's terrific that Mia goes around again. Yes, absolutely. The The experience piece um, is something that is invaluable. That is not just like uh, making decisions in hard moments of the game. That's like culture within the team. They understand what a championship winning culture looks like. And so they can bring that in, in areas that, Uh, you know, the younger, less experienced players haven't really had the exposure to that stuff yet. Um, Mia Murray was one of my favourite players. (laughs) Uh, So (laughs) always playing against her is a bit of like a... It's you know, Mia. exciting. It's Mia. Yeah. So I've actually never told her that. Um, she knows now, <laughs> avid listener, and hopefully will join us on the WNBL show during the season. <laughs> Let's crack in to Friday night action and your Bendigo spirit are on the road to take on the UC Capitals at the National Convention Centre. Always love the Caps crowds up there. Yeah. One of the big storylines of the off season, of course, was Bendigo regaining the services of club and league legends Callie Wilson, the only yes. player to reach 400 games, returns to um, Bendigo with her great mate Kelsey Griffin. Four championships across two clubs. They aim now to win one with you, yes. number five, um, at Bendigo. Tell me about the impact Callie and Kelsey have had on the spirit. Oh, talk about invaluable. Like leadership just exudes from their everyday activities, you know, like they walk into a stadium and you're like, wow. Like <laughs> Every time Kelly says anything, like that, she's got the full attention of absolutely everyone in the stadium just kind of staring at her like, wow. You know, she is so, she says everything with such intent. She is so brilliant. She has such a brilliant basketball mind and she is such a great floor general and she puts everyone in positions to succeed. I am so grateful to get to play with her. I am so, 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 so grateful. That is royalty of the basketball Mm. world and talk about favourite players. Kelsey Griffin was also one of mine. Um, She, the way she hustles, the way she leaves nothing out on the floor, she's a great communicator and both of them have elevated our group immensely. Like we have a core group of people that returned from the, our previous season. Um, and with, you know, we've we've had some other new additions, you know, Abby Warung and Alicia Froling and Who also have previously played for yes. Bendigo. So great to have them back yes. in Regional Vic. And the Caps. Yes, <laughs> They're also playing yes, for the Caps. Um, but there's, it's just, it's such a great and wholesome group. You know, we, we all have each other's backs and it's, we're very connected and we've been doing a lot, um, trying to, you know, build our structure as a team, but having Kelly and Kelsey to kind of lead the way there is just completely invaluable. Mm -hmm. They're just brilliant. Both of them are just brilliant. Yeah, you can't measure what they do for culture and what they will do on and off the floor for Bendigo as the spirit aim to get back up the top of the ladder and be contesting championships like they did. Um. Last uh, earlier last decade. Um, let's talk about the Caps. They've had changes yep. too. So Veely, we know, is their new coach. They mm. have retained um, a fair bit of their core too. So we're talking Brit Smart, Alex Bunton, Jade yep. Melbourne. We love Jade Melbourne. Yeah. Um, two new imports. They've done exceptionally well over the last few years with imports. You yes. think Kia Nurse, Olivia Apupa, yeah. um, and uh, and they bring in Beck Pizzi. Mm-hmm. So there's been quite a few changes for the Caps and we know they're going to be quite young as yeah. well. I think that, uh, you know, when, when a team is young like that, they have nothing to lose. Um, Jados is the best. <laughs> She's brilliant. What a ball of energy and skill and I'm excited to 
play against her and just watch her do her thing and, you know, when she has a basketball in her hands, it always just looks so controlled and easy and flowing. And so Jade's going to go out there and do Jade things. Um, they're, they're a pretty well-balanced team and they've got some players like, uh, you know, Gemma Potter and Shanice Swain and um, Emily whittle Harmon and Rebecca Pizzi, as you said, that are, are, we're going to get to see more on the court this year. And they're, again, really talented players that can stretch the floor and it gets dangerous when you have so many snipers on the floor that can do that and it looks like Billy's put together a team mm-hmm. that can do that. So two great basketball stories. Emily Whittleham and one of the best stories of the season last year. Mm-hmm. I don't need to tell you about it. Yep. Um, but, you know, she comes to Australia nine years ago. She has a goal for eight years to make the WNBL. She finally cracks it with the Flyers. So she plays her first minutes. By the end of the season, she's starting. Yep. Um, just appreciating and living in every moment. She's a huge signing for the Caps. And then Gemma Potter with what yeah. she's been through. We know she's come back through NBA One. Um, Vili's got big, big wraps on what she might be able to do yeah. this season. And look, it's just great to have our young talent that's coming through healthy and yes. back on the court. Yes, yes. Uh, Caps uh, as well, their home crowd is absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. So it's always going to be a fun game playing up in camera. Well, one crowd that will be phenomenal this round will be at the State Basketball Centre on Saturday night where the Southside Flyers are playing on their new home court. They host the Adelaide Lightning and the GOAT will be unveiled in Teal Colours. She's only previously played for two clubs yep. in this league. Of course, that famous AIS championship team in 1999 where a team of teenagers yeah. took down the whole yeah. league and then five titles at Canberra. Um, she continues her remarkable comeback at mm-hmm. Southside um, and I hope the merchandise uh, stand is fully stocked, Annalie. Oh, it's going to be crazy (laughs) it's gonna be crazy people people rightfully so love Lauren and having her you know being able to step out and play in our league is gonna be incredible not just for the skill that she puts on show but what she stands for and all the work she does off the court for women in sport it's that that you know I athletic are gonna have their work cut (laughs) out for them keeping those like everything stopped so, yeah, I think as well my MVP, Marina Whittle, will be playing in that game. I'll be the, I'll be there for that one, cheering as loud. That's my pick for MVP this year. For the season? Yeah, Marina Whittle, she's coming You'll off the You'll get to great. present it to her <laughs> at the award. <laughs> that would be amazing. I could want nothing more. That would be great. Um, let's go back to the Flyers just for a tick. They are going to be big because they've yeah. got LJ. Abby Bishop is back from injury. Mm-hmm. They've signed Carly Ernst. They've mm-hmm. got Kayla Thornton as the import. And we'll put Blicky in there as a big yes. as well. Yes. That, there's some tall timber in that lineup. Yes, yes. And, you know, Cheryl uh, is a player's coach and she keeps all of the players on her team feeling confident and playing their best basketball. And I think they are going to be one to watch this year. Mm. I really do. They have so many weapons. So many weapons. So many weapons. Like you just named the tall timber, but like what about Maddie Rochi, Beck Cole, Amy Rochi? Um, there's just um, there's just so much talent in that team. They're going to be pretty unstoppable. And they've yeah. got a point to prove. It's their fourth season in the league. So runners up season one, champions in the hub. Um, and then last year didn't make the finals. It was, yeah. you know, a disappointing campaign for them. They come up against Adelaide Lightning, as you mentioned. Marina had an extraordinary year as well, three-on-three three medal um, at the Com Games. And she's had an incredible NBL one season too. Mm-hmm. I know you were there cheering when Ringwood took I out the was South Ringwood's Conference biggest Con- supporter. Yeah, and I most was. vocal. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I heard you. Yeah, I think everyone from here to the Northern Territory could hear me from that game. So. Well, let's talk about the lightning because Natty, um, unsurprisingly, she's bought in some guards and it's yeah. going to be great to see <laughs> how they go. So Abby Cavillo, one mm-hmm. of of the young stars of the comp. She was won championships with Canberra. And then at the other end of the spectrum, Marina's um, teammate from the Commonwealth Games yep. in Lauren Mansfield, yep. who's got a ton of experience. They're two great additions. Uh, absolutely. And I think, you know, with Steph Talbot kind of at the at the forefront of that team, um, they, they're they always going to play hard and they're always going to play together. And you add in someone like Lauren Mansfield, who is just 
like a baller. Like she is just a baller. Uh, so it, it, it's just going to like add more layers to that group. And, you know, Marina, I think, is the best player in the world. So that speaks for itself. Um, and then, you know, you have Chelsea Brook, who's been there for a, a long a time. A, a long time. I was trying to think how many seasons. A long time. I played with Chelsea in Adelaide. Did you? Yeah, yeah, I did. That was in 2017. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, long time. Um, but, yeah, so she's she's going to be great this year. Yeah. They're adding in two really awesome imports um, so Kirsten Bell, WNBA yep. um, experience, and then Jay Munro, who's yep. experienced and then some. Yep. So she's a bit older, mm-hmm. but she's long, she's athletic, yep. and that will suit this league. Yeah, she has a lot of European experience too, so it's going to be exciting what she can bring to the WNBL. The more talent, the better. It only elevates our league higher. Um, but, yeah, so it, they're, they're going to be exciting to watch, and that clash between Southside and Adelaide is going to be a, a brilliant way for Southside to open at their new stadium. Um, very, very cool to have those calibre of players going up against each other. Before we move on from that game, uh, in a couple of words, sum up Steph Talbot for me. We saw what she did at the Women's World Cup Tournament All-Star, which – I know she was so relieved to be able to play so freely after being hampered by injury yeah. at the Olympics last year. Yeah. Now, she's arguably the best player in the league because she was MVP in the hub season, yeah. runner-up to you yeah. last season. How do you sum up Stelbert in a few words? Stelbert. <laughs> <laughs> she's, uh, she's fierce, she's professional, and she is so multifaceted. I think that those would be the three the three things that, because like I say multifaceted because I can't just put in three things. There's so many things that go into, you know, what makes her so amazing. But I I would say fierce, professional and multifaceted. Yeah. She's the best. She's the best. She really is. And she's funny. She's she, funny. Yeah, just ask her. She'll tell you. <laughs> she wants to co-host too, so we'll have to tee her up. She, yes. she told me she's up for about 15 weeks. So Absolutely. We'll, uh, we'll get her in. Let's move on to Sunday action now. Bendigo, back home, baby. Yes. Hosting the Perth Link. So big weekend for Bendigo and Perth, or for Perth a big few days because yeah. they play Wednesday. But mm-hmm. how great is it going to be to get in front of that home crowd? I cannot wait. I cannot weight and I think you know Bendigo obviously has undergone some new ownership and they've done some amazing things so far of getting us involved with the community and um, having a broader outreach and I love bringing basketball to regional Victoria and I we're bussing in some kids from some flood affected areas and it's going to be a really really awesome event not just a game, it's an event. It's an event. A basketball game in Bendigo is always an event. Um, and I get to play against my best mate in Lauren Scherf. So that's always fun. <laughs> That'll be great. How good is the matchup going to be between Scherfy and Meg? Oh, my God. That is just too incredible Amazonian stunning beautiful women so how great how great it's going to be great I'm going to struggle watching basketball with those two matching up against yeah. each other just like wow they both just look so amazing and you're and you're also playing with Kelly and Kelsey yeah, I mean, like I'm just going to be standing there like wow everyone looks so good <laughs> everyone just looks so great so <laughs> it's going to be interesting because you know it is a double header mm-hmm it, you know, someone's got to play them in round yep. one, but yep. it's a lot first up. So. I know, I know. It'll be good though. I, I am really excited. Like the more basketball, the better. Yeah. The more basketball, the better. At this point, just chuck a triple header in there. Kelsey is going to be listening to this and be like, what are you saying? Yeah, Kelsey's <laughs> like, not going to like that. So chuck a triple header in there. Put four games in one weekend. No. Let's take it back to the, the old school tournament days. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at our final game of the round on Sunday. Townsville open their season yes. account at home hosting the Caps. One thing we always know we're going to get from um, the fire with Shannon Seabom as coach is fire yes. and they're shaping up really nicely as well. Um, Loz Nicholson, we saw her at the, the season launch last week. She's healthy, the yep. body's good, which is great. I'm so excited to see the further development of Steph Reid yes. and Courtney Woods, two yes. of the rising stars of this competition. Oh, absolutely. I think um, Woodsy is like a silent assassin. Um, she just kind of goes about her business and then all of a sudden she has 24 points. You know, she is so such a talented scorer, such a talented scorer. She just finds a way. 
And then, you know, we got to see a little bit more of her towards the back end of the mm. season because of injuries. And, you know, I say, let's see more. Let's continue to see more of Woodsy. And uh, then Steph Reed just does Steph Reed things. She just does Steph Reed things. She is like the hardest working person I've ever met. She continues to level up and to grow and to evolve every season. You know, I, I, I played with her at Southside and she just literally evolves every year. It's like a new version. It's like a levelling up Pokemon. Steph Reed is a levelling up Pokemon. She, she's at like level six. <laughs> yes, and there's right so now. many. There's infinite levels for her. So, you know, it's, she just pulls some stuff out that I'm, I, I don't understand how she does it. And, you know, she... You know, the the duo, her and Zatina as well, has always been super, super exciting to watch. And um, obviously Lauren, a healthy Lauren Nicholson mm. is always is everything. great for the WNBL. So Samuelson and Hawkins are their imports. Um, we mentioned Steph Reid. I mean, really just a poster girl for what a WNBL season can catapult you to because yep. she played, of course, with you in the Opals games against Japan yep. in New South Wales earlier in the year. So um, I spoke to Shannon uh, a couple of weeks ago. They're really determined to get back to playing that basketball that took them to a grand final. Yeah. Um, um, a standalone a grand final yep. in, in the hub because they too were disappointed not to make the four last year. So um, really fascinated to see what Townsville can do. And we have a buy-in round one. We need to talk about Sydney. That's we can't so forget random. that. It's so random. That's I so think random. that's how, felt, how Sydney felt too yeah. because they have momentum. Yep. They were here last week. They knocked off the Boomers and the Flyers in pre-season scrimmages. Yep. Um, they've had a busy off-season as well. And um, – they are they are pretty keen to to get to finals um, in the second year of where they're at in their program. Yeah, I mean you have Shyla and Keely and um, Kalani returning, so and 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 Kira, Kira. as well. Yep. And I think as, as as much as we see a lot of changes happening in that group, and you know bringing in Tiana and you know some other big imports and some big names, we also like. The, the talent in that guard section of that team, mm. like I cannot wait to see Tiana, Vanessa, and Shyla in that you know, you know, just running the team, doing all of the skill point guardy things that they do. Like they are going to be absolute scoring annihilators of that group. Like it, it is really, really like I can't picture it yet. But I know that it's going to be so cool to see the three of them playing together mm. and what they can do. And I think, you know, for, for Shyla to be surrounded by, as you know, amazing talent in that way because she in, in and of herself is an amazing talent. So I, I, it's going to be such a different look to last year, I feel, um, for Sydney. And it, it seems like Shane has done an awesome job in going away and putting together uh, a group that is just absolutely full of talent and they look excited. Mm. They look excited. And, you know, when I spoke to Keely, she's pumped. She's ready to go. I mean, Keely's always pumped and ready to go, but they they seem, it just feels like a different energy from last mm. season from Sydney. They're young, they're energetic. Um, Shyla and Tiana come off playing an NBL one season together. I think that, that, helps. that is a huge head start in yeah. terms of chemistry. You mentioned Vanessa. Great to have Vanessa Panousis and Tiana Mangakahi back in the WNBL. Yeah. That's what we want. We want players, Australian players coming back yes. to the league. Um, but they're going to be good. And so is Jocelyn Willoughby. Yes. Um, there's yep. big, big raps on her. Yep. Um, really excited about all the import talent. But yeah. Sydney are excited about her and, and they certainly have reason to. They have to wait a week to play, but they play uh, you. Yes, the following us. week, they following do. me, frolling. It's gonna be on. It's always so fun. <laughs> it's always so fun. I mean, talk about white line fever. Like both the frolings have it. Oh, I have it. Kelsey has it. Kelly has it. Shyla has it. Tiana has it. You know, it's gonna be such an aggressive, fun game. Wait, is that in Sydney? That oof, that's too far ahead of no. where my brain's. We're taking it one I've round got, at a time. I've, I see the two games written down here, and yeah. those are the ones that I'm. It's where you need about. to be this week. Exactly. Um, okay, so we can't wait to see them. Round two, we'll talk about the Flames uh, in depth more next week. Yes. So okay. Exciting. Annalee, let's talk more about 2022 because it has been magnificent for you. It's been 
Crazy. It's been crazy. <laughs> Should we go back to the start? Yeah. The start of the year. So start that, of the year, you yeah. were in the back end of your first season with the Bendigo Spirit yes. and you went on to win, well, pretty much every award that was on offer <laughs> and and category. Um, how, did it, how does it feel on reflection? I, to be completely honest with you, haven't really had time to even reflect on anything. I'm trying to take it. And now I feel like I'm finally getting, you know, time to sit back and just feel everything because I didn't get any time to sit and even enjoy that for what it was. And, you know, I, I wish in hindsight I took a couple of weeks, two or three weeks after that season to just almost feel proud of myself, but I, I just kind of jumped into the next thing. And I think as I, I am still so baffled by the fact that that even happened, it was an amazing season. And I, I think the the most important thing for me to highlight is that I don't actually think about that season as an MVP season for me, because it wasn't that end accolade that I enjoyed the most. It was like every single day day in, day out practice, every single game, that was the most enjoyable part for me. The, the, the accolade at the end is amazing. At, at, you know, I feel very privileged for that. But the part that I enjoyed the most was the grittiness, the grind, the, the, the part where you play basketball and you're not thinking about anything else. That, is, that for me was the most valuable moments. You know, that, that, that's what that was for me. Um, but the, the, the end accolade, I still haven't really wrapped my head around what that even means um, and how I really even feel about it because as amazing as it it sounds, I, 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 I'm surrounded by all these incredible players that I idolise and it was just, it still is a bit like, did that really happen, you know? But I, I, I did jump straight from that into a WNBA stint and that was amazing and that's why you didn't have time to reflect yes. too because you were picked up by the Chicago Sky yes. which was incredible in itself mm -hmm. and you were over there in a hot meeting yes absolutely I um I and, and I guess in that way I didn't really have to prepare like I didn't have to put in extra training or anything to get ready because I was coming off the back of a season and I was very fit going into that so that's something that I'm grateful for I loved my time in Chicago absolutely loved my time in Chicago and I think knowing that it it was like only temporary and it could end at any minute because I wasn't signed on anything mm. I was just there until I wasn't and that made me really appreciate the, the the every single moment the small things you know meeting the media team talking to fans playing in that stadium playing with you know like Courtney Vandersloot, Ali Quigley, um, Candace Parker like that was incredible. That was incredible. And I, as soon as it started, it felt like it was over, but I had such an incredible, amazing experience and I would go back in a heartbeat. And I am, you know, I have put it out there that I would love to go back, but also I'm, I'm not thinking ahead of, you know, my first mm -hmm. game. That's, that's where I am at the moment. I'm not thinking ahead of my first game, but that was an amazing experience. And from there, I literally went straight to that series against Japan. <laughs> and look, as much as the news that you um, had been cut from Chicago, like, of course, that shattering after having that experience yeah. that you've dreamed of. But the silver lining was mm -hmm. that Australia were playing Japan in yes. Sydney and you were able to come straight home and play. And I remember seeing you in Sydney and um, – it was like trying to keep a bull away because you, you were jet lagged out of your mind. I was so And you wanted to play that game too and they were trying yeah. to pull you back. Yeah. Um, but you were able to make your debut in Newcastle mm -hmm. and um, I got to interview you actually yes. after the game with Screeny and it was um, it was incredible to be there and uh, describe to me what it was like to, to debut for your country. Well, first off, I wasn't shattered that I got waved. I wasn't um, disappointed in the slightest because I wasn't even supposed to – make it past the first two days of training camp. You know, I, I definitely wasn't supposed to play a couple games. Like I proved myself and I forced him to keep me for as long as he could. And I was so grateful. And when that experience came to an end, it felt like a pleasant kind of close. Cause I, mm. I knew the whole time that I couldn't be there for the whole time because I was 
an injury replacement player. So I was never once, I, I never felt blindsided. I knew that that was coming. So I had the time to kind of uh, wrap up in my brain that I was going to get waived. So that was actually a pleasant, you know, I wasn't shattered. I was just kind of like, okay, on to the next. Like a mutual uncoupling? Yes. Is that what you call it? Well, I can't, I don't even know. Cause Did like you I still, we uncoupled, <laughs> but I still feel as much a part of it as, you know, I, I did when I was there. Like yeah. I, I just loved it. James is amazing. That was great. Japan, that whole, that was my Opal's debut. And a lot of the girls didn't know that it was my debut. So, really? What, no. Yes. So, like before the game, I remember like, um, when they presented me with my jersey, I uh, was always awesome. Newcastle showed up, didn't they? Newcastle showed up and they showed out, and they were so supportive. And Japan were brilliant, and that game was so much fun, so much fun. Like for my Ovals debut to get to play in front of a home crowd, how awesome! That was really cool. Um, I really enjoyed myself. Uh, yeah, that was just a really pleasant, pleasant experience for me. And a taste of what was to come because yeah. a few months later you would also wear the same uniform in the same state in a home World Cup. There's no way you could have told me that this time last year and I would have believed you. I'd been like, shut up. Like <laughs> I think this time real. last year we'd been doing NBL One Show interviews yes. about Altham and Pete so and I were weird, g- huh? laying down rebound um, stats, stats yeah. for you. But um we we started the show by talking about the bronze medal winning performance at the FIBA yes. Women's World Cup in Sydney. So I feel like it's a nice way to finish yes. about how you would deliver the news that you'd made the final team. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that the, there was an Instagram post that uh, quoted me for a little something that was a little embarrassing because I didn't think I was going to make the team. I was pretty, I was pretty sure of it. And I was, I was okay with it. I was like, yeah, you know, what a journey. It's been great. That's okay. You know? And I usually in the past when you don't make something, she gives you a phone call. Sandy Brondello. Sandy. Yep. Sandy will give you a phone call. Of the Opal. And we had just gotten back from New York and I was painting my house um, not well, <laughs> not very well. <laughs> there was paint everywhere. And I got the call while I had a roller in one hand. <laughs> and so Were you wearing white overalls? I think I might have just, I think I was just wearing an oversized flannel. Oh, and nothing flannel. else. I think that's all it was. I, th- I, but there was paint everywhere. Like I was covered it in white paint, and I had paint on my hands, and then a roller in one hand, and I, I couldn't really see who was calling, so I just kind of answered, and then had it, you know, in my ear like this, and I was still painting. And Sandy was like, "Oh, hey, hey, it's Sandy." I was like, "Oh, hey, Sandy, like what's up?" And I didn't know what to do with my hands, so I just kind of stood there. And then she started talking about like how she was happy with how I went and all this stuff. And then she told me that I made the team and I, I dropped the paint, the paint <laughs> roller on the floor. I dropped my phone and a bunch of paint. I, and then I had to be like, oh crap. Uh, and she was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, yep, I'm good. And then I just like picked up my phone and ran outside and we spoke and she told me and, um, Marina was in the other room and she was like, what just happened? And I, I was looking, still looking at the floor with how much pain I just put everywhere. <laughs> and I was like, I just made the team. And as I ran over to Marina to give her a hug, I continued to put paint everywhere. So, you know, I've got a nice little reminder that in my house nice story. Um, of when she told me that I made the team and how much paint is still on my floorboards that I haven't been able to get off yet. But like you could just look at that paint and just exactly. remember the I day it I fell. Maybe I just haven't removed it yet because I know what it means. I think there's something subconscious there that you haven't addressed Absolutely. and I'm fine with it. I'm totally fine with it too. <laughs> it's totally fine. Totally it's, fine. It's been a glorious year for you, Annalie, mm-hmm. and you will finish this year playing for Bendigo yes. in the Signet WNBL, and you'll be with us for a few more apps before this year. I will. Is out yet. Um, thank you so much for coming up or down the highway, up the highway, down the highway, down the highway, down the highway to uh, yes. co host with me, round one. Wishing Always. you and the spirit the best in your double header. Thank you. This weekend, you. and look forward to catching up with you next time you're here about how your season is progressing. Um, Can't wait. Don't forget to catch all the action Wednesday night ESPN, the weekend games streamed live and free on Nine Now. Catch up on all the info you could possibly ever want on our socials, and we'll be back next week to wrap up round one. Everything you want and more on the WNBL show. <laughs>